Good afternoon, and welcome to the May edition of the Micron MVP webinar. Uh, defending your data, your company is under attack. Uh, my name is Matt Wokus, and I will be your moderator today. Uh, with me is John Tangwe, our senior technical marketer. marketing engineer at Micron, and an expert on uh, solid state drive encryption. Uh, John, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. So, uh, we're talking about uh, 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 encryption and uh, security for SSDs. I think you have quite a bit of information on here. Um, what I'd like to do is, for the people that are at the, on the webinar, we'd like to have this uh, discussion as interactive as possible. So please uh, feel free to use the uh, question box that's on the, your, your webinar uh, window, and we will be able to, John should be able to uh, address some of those questions live during the broadcast. And if not, if we're not able to get to it, we'll be able to answer it uh, through direct message afterwards. So with that, uh, John, uh, take it away. Okay, thanks, Matt. Uh, again, what we, our, our topic today is defending your data your company is under attack. And we, we want to um, uh, raise awareness, but we don't want to raise too much hype. And I hope your company under attack is not that too much hype. On the other hand, in the uh, IT industry, I think a lot of us know that data security is, uh, you know, could very well be the most important topic that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, at any rate, my name is John Tangue. As Matt said, uh, I'm a technical marketing engineer with Micron Technology. Uh, I'm here at the corporate headquarters in, in Boise, Idaho. Uh, my responsibilities include a lot of uh, pub public-facing documentation, uh, tech notes and tech briefs and that sort of thing, as well as a lot of other public communications, uh, our web presence. And from time to time, you'll see me uh, on the road at uh, various uh, trade shows and presentations like that. So uh, if you happen to be attending one of these electronics trade shows, do stop by our Micron presence and say hello. I'd love to talk to you uh, in person. And and also you're a uh, Spiceworks Spice Head, too. Yeah, if you're familiar with Spiceworks, uh, the, a, a very large IT forum uh, in Micron and Crucial, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit here, uh, has a big presence there. So let's go ahead and dive in. Um, data security, fight back with flash. Um, as I talked about, the data security uh, is could be, very well be the most important issue that we deal with in 21st century uh, IT. And we want to talk about a little bit about the SSD maker's role. Uh, there's a quote uh, to the right here. I'm not going to read that directly, but uh, from Experian regarding the extent to which um, IT managers and uh, corporations in general have to be concerned with data security. What our role in, in this particular uh, area is with regard to data storage, and we want to make sure that uh, our customers um, who manage data centers and uh, information servers, web servers, that sort of thing, uh, protect their data uh, in the event of hardware loss, theft, uh, and the resulting intrusions that come from the loss of, of storage hardware. We want to be able to create for our customers a verifiable method to protect data. Um, and by verifiable, I mean that we follow protocols that allow the customer to know for certain that his data is protected even if a storage device is, he, if, even if he loses control of a storage device. So bring peace of mind. IT managers, uh, CIOs, uh, CISOs, um, information security officers uh, have a lot to worry about with regard to data intrusion. So what we want to do is make sure that that one piece with regard to your stored data is locked down and secure, and so you can worry about all the other things with regard to hacks and intrusions uh, separately without having to worry about storage. So this is basically... This is basically then when the data is at rest, when it's stored, it's absolutely safe. Absolutely, Matt, and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll um, definitely talk about the various stages of uh, data protection that we want to talk about. So here's why we're here. Um, 
trends in data security breaches. So um, this is data that, that we have gathered from various sources um, in, in the data security industry. Um, and you can see on the left, those bars indicate uh, a trend of reported incidents between uh, 2010 with the blue bar and, and 2013 with the green bar. Uh, the numbers almost don't matter, but you can see that the reported incidents has doubled in those three years. And re remember, these are reported incidents, so probably a lot more is going on that, that didn't get reported to the particular uh, information sources that we gathered. 2013, as you may recall, was known as the year of the hack, and, and that's the, the green bar at the very top. Um, and so, you know, hacks and intrusions and those sorts of things, uh, Trojans and worms and whatnot, really are, are the big concern. But right behind that is what we want to talk about uh, today. Unfortunately, the storage device maker can't help you protect against intrusions and hacks, but what we can help you prevent is that next bar, which is um, you know, lost or stolen drives, lost or stolen PCs, um, uh, that sort of thing. Um, you can see actually, again, the green bar is the newest data, that the percentage of uh, those incidents has actually gone down. Uh, so we're making some progress, but keep in mind that the total incidents has gone up. So uh, the, the overall uh, number of intrusions is staying pretty constant, and we want to try and drive that down. So, when, you know, again, why are we here? Uh, I won't read all these directly, but you can see uh, some of the effects on cost, total cost of uh, ownership that, um, that uh, can result because of a data breach. So, you know, $200 uh, in cost per customer record lost. And typically, you're not just going to lose a single customer record, you're going to lose many thousands of records. So multiply that by a couple hundred dollars per. 60% uh, of corporate computer users these days are now on laptops as their primary computer. So they're, they're storing data internally to the company, but then that data is going on the road. And 500 million data records lost since uh, 2005, and that number is just continuing to tick on. I think that number of 500 million is 2005 to sometime in 2014. So you can imagine uh, that that ticker is is going up very rapidly every day. So before we dive in, let's uh, talk about some common terms that we refer to in the data storage and data security industries. Uh, an SED, we're going to talk about it extensively today. That's a self-encrypting drive, usually encrypted by hardware that's on board the drive itself. And we'll talk in, great deal of, in a great deal of detail about that. Uh, full disk encryption, or FDE, um, this is a little bit of a gray area with regard to definitions, but typically we're talking about a full disk encryption that is executed by software which is running on the host computer. Now that's not universal and unfortunately we, unfortunately we get into some definitional problems and some people use FDE in one way, some people use FDE in another. We'll just have to work through that. Uh, but mind you, most of my discussion today, I'll be talking about what's known as an SED, a self-encrypting drive. Uh, the Trusted Computing Group, or TCG, is an industry organization which uh, has many, many member companies in the uh, IT uh, industry, from data storage to computer manufacturers to uh, data uh, transmission uh, providers and uh, anything in between. So from endpoint to endpoint, um, anywhere along the computing environment, the TCG is involved. Specifically, what we're talking about is the storage subsystem classes, or SSC, and there are two today, at least two major ones that we um, will be talking about. So the sub storage subsystem class, OPAL, is the TCG uh, protocol, which is officially um, referring to client computing and more specifically mobile computing uh, uh, laptops in particular. Um, it also does some work with um, tablets and, and storage devices like that, less with tele or, uh, mobile phones, I should say, so mostly computing. Uh, TCG Opal is now uh, starting to be used also in desktop computing, even though those 
computers aren't as mobile. They certainly can be moved, and so we're, we're starting to see more encryption used there. Uh, TCG SSC Enterprise refers to uh, storage devices that are used in servers, in main storage, in data centers, and um, all kinds of other enterprise class server applications. Uh, TPM is a trusted platform module. We'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but that is a, a device that's used to manage uh, encrypted drives and to manage uh, uh, certificates and authentications and things like that that we'll talk about. AES is the Advanced Encryption Standard, which comes to us from the government and refers to the direct encryption methodologies. Uh, SHA is a secure hash algorithm, which refers to protecting uh, passwords and that sort of thing. A PSID we'll talk a, a bit about. A uh, PSID is a physical security identifier, which um, the uh, storage device can use to recover itself in the event of a lost authentication. I'll talk about that in detail later. Uh, FIPS. FIPS is an important one, and, and FIPS we'd love to hear from you uh, some feedback on. FIPS is a federal information protection standard from the United States government. Um, it refers to really a federal standard for protecting data in computing environments and has some very specific standards. Um, uh, the feedback we'd like that we'll talk about later is that um, uh, whether you or your customers uh, end users have requirements for FIPS, and we'll talk about why um, we as a device manufacturer would love to get feedback about what your requirements are for FIPS certified devices. IEEE 1667 is the standard protocol for authentication in host attachments of transient storage devices, which is a long, windy way of saying um, thumb drives and detachable devices like that. However, the um, standards organizations quickly, believe, quickly realized that um, a SATA drive or, or other PC-type storage device while it's not technically a removable device, it certainly can be removed, and so that protocol is important for serial ATA drives, PCIe drives, and other uh, data storage devices, SAS and, and uh, SCSI as well. So we, we take that protocol and combine it with the TCG protocols and come up with what is known as eDrive. And eDrive is a Microsoft-specific standard for encrypted drives which is incorporated into Windows 8 and soon to be incorporated in Windows 10. So with that groundwork out of the way, um, let's talk about what we're, what we're really protecting against. And, and Matt kind of alluded to this a little bit ago with regard to the various things that we, the various attack modes that uh, IT managers will see. So there's three real areas. Data in use, which, which is data which is being used right now by applications or the, the operating system and is susceptible to uh, interception or, or detection by malware um, and other intrusions. The TCG, Opal, and Enterprise protocols do not protect data in use. If you are reading data, if you are already authenticated, in other words, you've entered a password, uh, and you are computing, then your data is in the clear, and you are not protected by the Opal and Enterprise uh, protocols. There are other things that you have to take, uh, other steps you have to take, like virus protection and firewalls and whatnot, to protect your data while it's being used. Data in motion is, is data that's traversing uh, a network or the internet or some other thing, uh, susceptible to hackers and data sniffers and that sort of thing. Again, TCG Opal and TCG Enterprise are not intended for that particular attack vector. Here's where we get to what we are talking about today, and we are talking about data at rest. This is uh, quote unquote inactive data that is physically stored on a, on a data storage device like an SSD or a hard drive or, or something like that. Data at rest is susceptible to the physical theft or loss of the device. So that's what we're talking about in that if you lose a storage device um, you, and you, um, uh, you have protection by authentication uh, and encryption so that the data on that device cannot be used. And we'll talk, that's, you know, this particular area is, is exactly what we're going to talk about really for the rest of the presentation. 
And so that's you, the the major. Oh. I, that's that's probably the major concern too. Is if you lose a laptop or if uh, uh, drives are taken from servers, that that data uh, is cannot be accessed. Yeah, absolutely, and that goes into what we're going to talk about right now, Matt. In that you know t TCG encryption, who needs it? And really, the answer is everyone, at least almost everyone. Any business that electronically stores sensitive data on, on many different types of storage devices from the images you see here in, in the data center, in your servers, and whatnot, all the way to your employees who are carrying sensitive data with them uh, out on the road in, in airports. Uh, employee information, tax records, uh, protected health information is critical that it be protected uh, from loss or, or theft. Uh, financial records and reports, all the way down to your, your own personal information um, that uh, on your notebook, your personal notebook computer that you may want to protect in case you lose that device. So why do we do it? In business, really there are a number of key reasons. TCG encryption, specifically following TCG protocols, satisfies regulations and standards on data protection that come to us from uh, really governments throughout the world. Um, they, there are requirements, especially in uh, the medical industry and the financial industry, that data be protected and the data protection methods be validated. Uh, these these uh, methodologies, specifically with regard to TCG, enable safe harbor protections, and we'll have a slide specifically outlining that in just a moment. Uh, cryptographic erase uh, streamlines uh, in, encryption itself, streamlines the method of uh, sanitizing and decommissioning storage devices when you no longer need them. Uh, in other words, that encryption also allows you to go ahead and quickly eliminate data by uh, changing the encryption key, making all those bits on the storage device completely unreadable. And again, pre prevents uh, data breaches because of the loss or theft of a device. So you've probably heard of incidents where uh, a, a uh, Social Security administrator loses his laptop in an airport, and all those Social Security uh, uh, customer records or user records are lost and out of their control and uh, puts your customers at risk and your company at risk and all sorts of other problems. So here are some of the regulations and standards that TCG encryption, TCG Opal, and TCG Enterprise both can help you with. Again, in the health, mar health records, markets, food and drug, credit cards, banking and finance. Um, we can help prevent uh, these penalties that firms and individuals run into with regard to fines, uh, penalties, uh, even civil and criminal charges that uh, executives of some of these firms could be um, uh, liable for. Um, I won't go through every one of these regulations. This is just an, a sample. It's not e intended to be an exhaustive sample either, but HIPAA from the United States government, uh, the BDSG uh, from, from Germany, uh, uh, California, you know, state level regulations as well as federal and national. Uh, Sarbanes-Oxley obviously is very, uh, uh, very prevalent here in the United States. All these regulations and more require that you protect your data using validated methods uh, specifically from the Trusted Computing Group. So safe harbor. Safe harbor is a really important part of many of these laws. Within the United States, at least 46 of the states have privacy laws with, uh, which encryption allows safe harbor. And what that means is safe harbor is a provision in those laws that says that if you verifiably use uh, encryption methods that are certified uh, by the Trusted Computing Group uh, in particular, then if a storage device is lost, you um, often are not required to report that loss to um, the public and to uh, government. Well, you would still need to report to government agencies, but you don't necessarily need to make that public. And that's important because uh, you know from examples here in the United States like Target Corporation and the Home Depot who had high-profile data breaches, it, 
it costs you not only money in trying to recover from the breach, uh, trying to compensate users, but also in brand reputation and, and the trust you have with your customer. So uh, if you have these safe harbor protections in place, uh, you can protect your, your, the reputation of your company um, at a high level in addition to actually protecting your customers in case those storage devices are lost. So now we get a little bit into how-to, and we won't dive into the, the gory details about how this is done, but data at rest security really uh, only takes two steps to do it. Uh, obviously, the technical details are, are much more complicated than that, but there's only two things you really need to do. Step one is data encryption. Obviously, scrambling the bits that you uh, receive from the host computer before you store them. Uh, data encryption is really done in, in one of two uh, major ways. That's hardware encryption, which is on-the-fly encryption performed by the SSD controller. Uh, the beauty of that is it has zero impact to the performance of the storage device or the storage system. Software encryption, on the other hand, typically is done by the host CPU. There are variants of that where there's actually a separate uh, encryption engine. But uh, in a lot of computing systems, we've observed uh, that uh, software encryption can cost you as much as 20% of your data throughput. So all that additional money that you spent on your solid state drive because of its incredible performance, you got to give some of that back when you start doing software encryption. So we definitely encourage using hardware encryption. I won't go through this list of uh, kind of uh, features of hardware encryption versus software encryption uh, uh, point by point, but needless to say, uh, we think that hardware encryption is really a, a superior solution to the software uh, type. There are some things that software can do, like encrypt individual drives or individual folders if that's all you need, um, but you need to, to uh, uh, make that determination for yourself. Generally, hardware encryption does 256-bit encryption, which is a little bit more secure and um, harder to break than a 128-bit encryption in engine. Um, in fact, we believe in practice a 256-bit encryption engine is impossible to break, at least by today's known means. So the second step then is data access protection. And data access protection, the simplest way to think about that is password protection. Now there are many ways to uh, issue an authentication code, which is the overall uh, um, a password, I should say, is a type of authentication code, and there are many other types of authentication that you can use. I've listed a couple of here, like biometric scanners, like uh, uh, facial recognition, recognition, as we're seeing come out in Windows 10, uh, fingerprint readers, which are pretty familiar to people already, uh, smart cards, and other methods of uh, controlling access to a, a data storage device. A couple of main ways to do that are through the ATA security protocol, which directly deals with the storage device. And typically, this is initiated by the, the BIOS or by the UFI in your um, personal computer. Perfect for individual users. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, individual computer users probably don't need to uh, go as far as using the TCG tools that we're going to talk about today, or that we are talking about today. On the other hand, uh, PCs, notebooks, uh, and then um, data center type computing uh, need the additional protection of the, the uh, TCG protocols that we've talked about, in particular the Opal for mobile computing and the SSC Enterprise for enter, uh, enterprise level security uh, manageable from a secure uh, system console. Again, more details to come. So those are the two steps, the data encryption itself and then the data access protection by authentication code, um, including passwords and biometrics, et cetera. Let's talk about TCG Opal first. Again, TCG Opal is the encryption for mobile computing, uh, a little bit in desktop computing, but mostly focused on mobile. And TCG Opal may be a little bit more familiar to a lot of people because we've been doing mobile encryption uh, for several years now. In fact, Micron is now on its fourth generation of self-encrypting drives following the TCG Opal 
uh, protocols. Our data travels the world as never before, but nearly 70% of the missing notebooks uh, reported uh, by this firm, Janko Associates, are lost in airports and airplanes while, while data is in transit, literally. Um, and most of these are never recovered. So the regulations and standards apply to data on the go as well as the data center. Um, we can provide you with the secure, security <laughs> to know, uh, or the, uh, the ability to know that your data is protected by strong authentication, um, access protection when the computer is lost, um, and that when the, the device is not in use, that data is not accessible without that authentication code. Um, and we do like to say that if your password is password, all the encryption in the world can't protect you. But you, following best practice methods for authentication, uh, you have strong assurance that your data is protected. Uh, remote access to lost computers. This is one thing that TCG brings you that the, the individual user doesn't necessarily need, but an IT manager in, uh, in his office at headquarters uh, can actually look out on the Internet for all of his notebook computers that are roaming around the world, and if they become lost or stolen, he can gain access to them and potentially wipe the drive and make sure that that computer is not usable to whoever ends up with uh, possession, physical possession of the computer. Very handy uh, uh, part of the protocol that TCG brings you, and that can be provided um, in methods that we'll talk about in just a couple of slides. So, and also centralized password backup and corporate authentication so that um, if you, an end user loses a password or, or something like that, then the IT manager can go back and, and gain access to that computer um, even if the original authentication is lost. So notebook encryption, the self-encrypting drive or SED solution. Um, I'll make a note here, um, Micron is the only uh, company so far that has Windows Server SED certifications, um, and you can go off to um, the Microsoft website and do searches for encrypted drives, and you'll find our products listed and certified. Um, Micron, uh, our, our SSDs or SEDs include, an, as I mentioned, a 256-bit hardware encryption engine, which provides you that uh, full encryption protection with no loss in performance. We comply to the uh, TCG Opal uh, protocol. It's on version 2 now. Uh, important to note, uh, TCG Opal 2 is not backwards compatible with Opal 1. And so if you have software with, that conforms to Opal 1 but drives which conform to Opal 2, it can cause you problems, and that's something to be aware, with, uh, aware about. And uh, make sure you work with your uh, uh, Micron representatives to make sure that, that everything should work together. You do need to have encryption management software. Now, if your BIOS supports it and you only need to protect one device, that's fine. But generally, you're also going to need some software. Now, in Windows 8 and Windows 10, BitLocker will provide you that functionality within the operating system under what's known as eDrive. But otherwise, other, <laughs> otherwise, you will need to have some additional protection, and firms like WinMagic listed here and Wave Systems provide really complete solutions not only to protect individual devices, but to protect all the devices within, uh, within your enterprise. Um, then uh, again, putting the uh, TCG Opal and TCG, I'm sorry, TCG Opal and IEEE 1667 protocols together gives you eDrive within BitLocker. Again, BitLocker is a very uh, uh, satisfactory solution for a lot of other people, but the flexibility of uh, managing a lot of devices in your in your enterprise is something that Wave and WinMagic also bring to you. There are a lot of uh, providers of software besides Wave Systems and WinMagic, and, and um, we list a few here. I'm sure I'll get in trouble for not mentioning all of them, but we certainly work with uh, these firms in particular and, and others as well. Uh, Symantec, a, a very huge name in, in encryption and data protection, is now getting into um, SED management in addition to their longstanding efforts in software encryption. Uh, Intel Security, 
um, kind of the artist formerly known as McAfee, um, they are obviously huge in data security as well as Absolute Software and Sophos and, and a whole lot of other companies. We are certainly willing to work with anybody to ensure that our hardware is fully compatible with their software and, um, and uh, work in a, a three-way relationship with um, our customers, their customers, to make sure that people have a complete solution for data security. I wanted to call out eDrive in particular because eDrive is fairly new. And I, I attended the Microsoft um, Ignite trade show um, uh, last week and was interested to see how little knowledge there is of eDrive, even though it's been available to people in Windows 8 in the professional and enterprise versions for, uh, well, since Windows 8 came out. eDrive is Microsoft's effort at managing self-encrypting drives as opposed to managing encryption through software as you saw in BitLocker on Windows 7. I won't read this in detail, but this is a description of what um, my, how Microsoft describes an eDrive. It is a self-encrypting drive plus this IEEE 1667 uh, protocol. Um, it is unique to Microsoft Windows, and um, but the, you know does provide a, a very good solution to uh, to your encryption needs. Uh, links here to extensive information from the Microsoft TechNet um, educational site. So I, I highly recommend. Uh, working with Microsoft on eDrive, if that's something that interests you. All of um, Micron's uh, SSDs and uh, many of the crucial SSDs are capable of supporting eDrive. Introducing TCG Enterprise, and I say introducing because it's fairly new. A lot of, there has been a lot of encryption going on in enterprise computing, but a lot of it's been done uh, by the host computing system um, and we're just now kind of scratching the surface of doing self-encrypting drives within, uh, within the enterprise computing environment. So what is TCGE? It is a data, encryption, uh, data security standard focused on enterprise computing um, uh, in many areas of data center, uh, enterprise computing from the data center to server applications and, and everything in between, um, and is, of course, uh, defined and, and uh, communicated by the Trusted Computing Group. Again, we're protecting data at rest through encryption. The encryption key, which is generated by the SSD, can never leave the drive. This is important, especially in, in enterprise applications, because it takes away the need of the host computer system or the IT manager from managing encryption keys. The uh, Authentication keys still need to be managed by the enterprise, but the encryption key generation and, and management is now taken care of by the drive. Um, if you know anything about encryption environments in enterprise, you know that many firms have to deal with entire servers which are dedicated to enc encryption key management and, and uh, generation. So that takes away a lot of work from the enterprise to have the encryption keys on the drive. Are there different versions? Yes, there are. Um, Micron is currently working towards the TCG uh, storage subsystem class enterprise specification version 1, revision 3.00, uh, released on January 10th, two, 2011. So fortunately for all of us in the industry, they don't re revise that document very often. You can see the last w version was about four or five years ago. So, um, but there are multiple versions, and, and you need to be aware of that when uh, selecting devices and selecting uh, host computer hardware that goes along with it. Uh, in particular, um, the TCG Enterprise drives that we are putting out, including our uh, M500DC uh, TCG Enterprise drive, works with LSI SafeStore. LSI, of course, is probably the leading uh, manufacturer of RAID cards and host bus adapters, and they are um, those host bus adapters and RAID cards are now capable of managing self-encrypting drives through what LSI calls SafeStore. Um, I won't dive into the details here, but needless to say, there are particular models that, uh, of RAID card that you should pay attention to, and note that the storage devices that go with those RAID cards need to be capable of uh, doing TCG enterprise uh, communication protocols.
there are other methodologies of, of managing this besides LSI Safe Store. For our part, we have not uh, implemented or tested uh, some of those other methods. So what's the difference between TCG Enterprise and TCG Opal? Really, I won't go through this step by step, but really the important part is how credentials are delivered to the device. And you see that's in the second bullet from the bottom here. Um, TCG Enterprise drives will uh, have the, um, the authentication or creden authentication credentials delivered by the system itself, in particular by the RAID card that we talked about with regard to um, LSI Safe Store just a moment ago. On the other hand, um, TCG Opal uh, has authentication that is essentially delivered by the user through a password or other device that we talked about. The difference there is that for TCG Opal drives, there is this um, methodology called pre-boot authentication. So authentication is actually done before the operating system starts. The key here is that the operating system then not not running at the time, there's no way an application under the operating system can um, try to crack or, or steal um, the authentication code or password. So you're running in a very tight little environment where as you key in a password, for example, uh, there's no other um, application running that could potentially detect what you're doing when you're entering that password. On the other hand, in TCG Enterprise, such a pre-boot authentication would be really impractical for arrays of drives. And so that pre-boot authentication is not required in the TCG Enterprise uh, specification or protocol. So more threats. If it wasn't bad enough that people are trying to get our, our data while, we're, while we are storing it or as we are storing it, um, there are other data breaches that happen at decommission, and here are some examples. Uh, Lockheed Martin, for example, uh, basically sold some drives that they, want, they wanted to decommission, and they ended up on eBay. But these drives that ended up on eBay contained some very uh, uh, confidential and important test launch procedures uh, that really should not have gotten into the public domain. These drives were reformatted, but they weren't securely erased. And so that led to a pretty serious uh, you know, national security breach in this case. The state of New Jersey uh, sent some computers out to uh, be auctioned off, but left Social Security and tax uh, return information on them. Uh, they made no attempt to erase the data, uh, but and, and, you know, caused, I'm sure, great headaches for uh, um, taxpayers in this particular case. Even NASA, who you would hope would be as technically able as anyone in the world, uh, ended up with uh, unencrypted computers sold to a second-hand store and uh, important data lost uh, because of that. So we need to talk about media sanitization. And um, uh, NIST, in particular, the National Institute of Standards and Technology here in the United States, has a publication that goes through uh, some detail in how to destroy and purge data. These red bullets at the top talk about really time-consuming methods of, of data, uh, data destruction that are very expensive and slow. On the other hand, our SEDs um, provide simple fast and safe methods of uh, deleting and purging data that we're going to talk about here in the next couple of slides. Um, so slow and expensive uh, previous methodologies, but self-encrypting drives and SSDs in particular give you safe and fast and inexpensive methods of sanitizing data. So we can help you minimize your TCO by allowing SSD reuse or passing them on to uh, uh, resale or give, give the devices to your local library for charity, that sort of thing, by allowing you to cryptographically erase the SSD. Cryptographic erase <clears throat> is a method that simply changes the encryption key on the drive. So you issue a command to the drive and the drive says, I'm going to delete and erase my current encryption key, and th with a random number generator on board, I'm going to uh, generate a new encryption key, a new 256-bit key. 
That means all the data on the drive. The ones and zeros are still there, but they're totally unreadable. SSDs in particular also give you, you the ability to security erase or sanitize the drive. Um, so whereas actually deleting the bits on a spinning hard drive can take you many, many hours, for a solid state drive, even a big solid state drive, we can actually get rid of those bits in about a minute. Um, so even though you've already cryptographically erased the drive, Hey, you know, it is conceivable, we suppose, that eventually someone will come up with a quantum computer or something that could break a 256-bit encryption. Why not just go ahead and take the extra minute and completely erase all of those bits? Um, I'm going to skip over this one, but this is just an illustration that shows you cryptographic erase takes about a second. Uh, sanitize takes a minute. If you were to do some of these operations for a spinning hard drive, you could take 10 hours or even more. So media sanitation tools that Micron drives support. Uh, sanitization is really a, a new protocol within the serial ATA uh, specification. There are different methods. We support sanitized cryptographic erase, as we just talked about. Um, we also support sanitized block erase, which goes ahead and does all that, uh, actually erasing the ones and zeros on the device. Um, we do not support sanitized overwrite. That's really an operation that is dedicated to hard drives, which don't support block erase. Um, and for technical reasons, which we won't go into, you don't really want to overwrite an SSD anyway. Third-party validation, and, and uh, again, this goes to my, my uh, point earlier about bringing peace of mind. Um, we have been saying for a number of years that our security erase and sanitized procedures will wipe your drive, wipe every single bit from the device and leave it in a, in a, uh, in a like new state. But for a lot of applications and a lot of customers who have to deal with particularly sensitive data, it may not be good enough to take Micron's word for it, and, and we are sensitive to that. So we engaged with a corporation known as uh, Kroll OnTrack, who is um, well known in the industry uh, for their data recovery uh, operations. In fact, they had a well-known uh, incident where they actually recovered data that came from the uh, crashed space shuttle many years ago. Um, amazing technology that they can use to recover data, but they also uh, help in validating data destruction. So if our friends at Curl on Track can recover data from a crashed space shuttle, then um, if they cannot find the data, I think you can be pretty safe in knowing that the data is unrecoverable. So what we did was um, sent um, drives to Curl on Track. They uh, filled the drives with data and then used our sanitized process uh, in order to uh, sanitize the drive and then went back and tried to detect data. And you can see a sample from uh, their report that all the data on the device was reported back as zeros. So all that data is gone and certified by Crow on Track. Certainly work with your Micron sales representative and we can deliver those certifications directly to you uh, or to your end customers. Um, I talked briefly about FIPS a little bit earlier in this presentation. Again, FIPS is a federal information protection standard uh, here in the United States. Um, and FIPS 140-2 in particular is a, is a protocol which is followed with regard to storage devices. And what I wanted to, uh, this is kind of a, a little bit of a call to action for our customers. We see tricklings of requirements for FIPS certified drives, in particular for the FIPS 140-2 or Revision 2 protocol. But the, the demand seems to, has seemed so far to be rather soft. And so my, my ask to you as out in the marketplace is please contact your, market, your Micron representatives as you get hard demand for FIPS certified drives. We certainly will add that to our roadmap. We know what to do in order to get certified, but the one thing that's been standing in our way is that a FIPS certification, as I list here at the bottom of the slide, can take as long as 18 months. Now, it's getting better, and typically it gets more into maybe the 12-month range, but when you look at 
product life cycles that are on the order of 12 to 18 months, you can see where the problem comes in. But on the other hand, if the demand is high, we'll certainly um, work that into our plans. Um, just let us know. You know, John, there's actually we've got a question online about do these drives uh, adhere to like our NSA approved for a uh, government secure race? Um, good question. So um, the NSA um, follows protocols from NIST, and I, I we were looking at that protocol. I don't remember the number off the top of my head, 880 something. Um, and so um, we are following the protocols from NIST. Now, when we work with a company like Kroll OnTrack, we are we are all working towards those particular protocols. And so we believe, um, although we are not certain, that uh, by going through this validation process with Kroll, we should satisfy NSA requirements and NIST requirements. Um, but we, we need to um, test that uh, as we go down the road. Um, so I, I think that answers your question. It's a little bit of an open-ended answer because it, we haven't fully gone all the way to, say, an, an NSA um, organization to, to get that approved. But between ourselves and, and Kroll, well, we think we're there. Um, so very quickly, let's talk about drive recovery. Um, you can imagine that if you lose an authentication code to an encrypted drive, um, you may very well have a device that you cannot use, um, a, a very expensive brick, if you don't mind the phrase. Uh, so PSID revert is a methodology of, of putting a code that's actually printed on the drive label. And so if you lose your authentication, well, unfortunately, there are no factory backdoors that Micron can use in order to recover your data. But you can use this PSID revert process in order to um, reuse the device. So what you do is you enter this um, uh, PSID, a secure ID, into a piece of software that issues this PSID revert command to the drive. The drive initiates a cryptographic erase and reinitializes the drive. You don't get your data back, but at least you can use the device again. Uh, finally, a, a, a word about the TPM. Uh, TPM is kind of outside of Micron's scope, but it is important to understand about. A TPM will uh, typically reside on the host system mainboard or, or motherboard, uh, possibly on a RAID card or a host bus adapter. And, um, the TPM is used to store security um, artifacts, as they call them, passwords and keys and certificates, and often is used to manage generation of, uh, of encryption keys, as I mentioned before. Uh, um, in a hardware encrypted system, um, the, the generation of the encryption key is not necessary, but the TPM can be used to marry the uh, SED, the drive, to the host computer. Um, however, this operation is kind of beyond micron scope, and so you should talk with your computer manufacturer when discussing that particular function. In other words, marrying the drive to the host so that if you plug that drive into a different host, the drive cannot be used. Um, BitLocker, in particular, can function without a TPM on an older notebook system, for example, that doesn't have a TPM, um, but may, be, may require that an external key uh, be created, uh, typically on a thumb drive. It's just it, it's possible to use. It's just a little bit inconvenient to have to keep that thumb drive with you whenever you want to access the the uh, notebook. So summing up, uh, the data storage hardware vendors, and Micron in, in particular, are very sensitive to the need to protect customers' data uh, and the need that our customers have to protect their customers' data and everything. So we are working uh, with all the vendors along the, the IT, uh, uh, the, the companies that work in IT, sorry, I got distracted there for a moment. Um, in order to come up with solutions um, with hardware and software to protect those needs. Encryption is critical for notebook, desktop, and enterprise computing um, at all levels. Even personal computing, I believe, um, you're going to see more and more encryption. In fact, our friends at Microsoft, as Windows 10 gets into the market, want to see encryption on basically every computer that goes out into the market.
SEDs provide an impressive solution to this encryption need while helping the total cost of ownership that uh, system builders have to deal with. So Matt, I'll have you take it away from here. John, thank you. Um, and uh, thank you, this is a lot of information. Um, I know that the slides will be available, the embedded slides will be available uh, after this web broadcast. Um, but what I'd like to do, actually, for the people that are attending, um, if you could just uh, use your uh, uh, portal there and uh, rate this webinar overall. If, you was, uh, if this is the type of information that was uh, useful for you and, uh, and if this was uh, helpful for your, if it was worth your time. And while we're doing that, we can go to Q&A. And do we have any questions from the audience? Okay, I have one question here. Um, if I don't use a user-generated uh, encryption key to unlock my drive, uh, so the drive is always unlocked, will SED still encrypt all the data written to it? Yeah, thanks, Matt. That's, that's an interesting question, and, and it's, it's kind of an important and fundamental one to know. Um, in a self-encrypting drive, the encryption engine is on, you know, on board the drive, uh, on the drive controller in particular, and the encryption engine is always running. If you don't initiate an encryption key, uh, for example, a password, then the drive is actually also always decrypting. And so your data, the, the drive will perform exactly the same as if it was unencrypted. However, the data is always being written in an encrypted fashion. Um, what you're, the most important thing in, in most cases is that you manage authentication. So manage passwords and manage facial recognition and thumbprint readers and, and all those other authentication methods. And that's uh, what TCG, um, Opal, and Enterprise bring to you is the management of the authentication and management of certificates in order to gain access to that encrypted data. So the encryption then comes in when uh, an intruder is trying to do a direct media read to whatever the media is, whether it's solid state or spinning magnetic media. Um, that's a more technically advanced step of um, that, you know, some data intruders may be able to take and, and do direct media reads. Uh, but for the most part, what you really want to do is manage authentication through passwords and other means. So um, through the TCG protocol, TCG Opal protocol or TCG Enterprise. Uh, okay, we've got another question here. Do we, uh, do we offer public-private key management solutions? Um, we do not. Um, so we, you know, Micron really is a hardware vendor. And so these, these public and private key uh, sources, we are actually customers of, <laughs> um, actually, in, oh. in generating the, um, uh, in generating uh, digital signatures for our firmware images, for example, and other things like that. But for the most part, Micron is, is a hardware vendor, and so we, we don't provide services like that. Okay, and we've got, uh, I think, one more question. Uh, so, uh, so really, bottom line, John, what's, what's the single, uh, biggest single thing an IT administrator can do to improve their security, their company's, the security of their company's data? Well, if, if I had to pick one thing, I, I would say, well, I'm, I'm a little biased, so if I had to pick one thing, I would say use self-encrypting drives. Um, because it's an easy step that you can take in order to protect um, uh, your data if you lose control of those storage devices. Um, that's, you know, uh, obviously being a hardware vendor, that's what I care about. Um, but the other thing you can do is um, the, the Trusted Computing Group does a lot more than uh, protocols for storage devices. Uh, there's trusted network or trusted networking 
um, that is covered by the TCG. So I would say go to trustedcomputinggroup.org and uh, scan around for your various security needs, whether you need to protect a Wi-Fi network or, or uh, protect your storage devices or protect Ethernet transmissions or data that you are sending to the cloud and to other spots on the Internet. The Trusted Computing Group really has a protocol for um, your whole range of uh, data security needs. Great. You know, John, thank you. Uh, I think we're just getting uh, uh, out of time to wrapping up. Um, and for everyone that's still on the uh, web broadcast, uh, do I'll let you know we have another broadcast coming up in just uh, two weeks uh, on May 27th. Uh, this is our next uh, Micron MVP uh, broadcast. Uh, this will be talking about the support for Windows Server 2003, uh, the fact that it didn't end July 14th, and you have two options, either upgrade or buy new. And guess what we're going to talk about? But actually, it's how you can improve your existing server performance with uh, Micron uh, SSDs and DRAM. Um, also, just a little more housekeeping, uh, we do have, uh, as a thank you, all of the uh, registered North American participants uh, are automatically entered to win one of three crucial MX200 uh, 256 gig SSDs with installation kit. So uh, the winners will have the drawing, I think, after the web broadcast, and the winners will be contacted individually. Uh, but thank you again for, uh, for participating. And again, if you go to any of these Micron MVP uh, webinars, uh, we'll be offering uh, the opportunity for a uh, for Micron SSD. And finally, again, uh, thank you, uh, John, for this, uh, for this webinar. Uh, here's a little more of John's background. Uh, very qualified and uh, expert in this field, and uh, we're really lucky to have this uh, have John be able to uh, participate today. So again, for everyone that's uh, at the Micron MVP webinar, thanks again for attending, and I hope to see you or hear from you again uh, in two weeks. Talk to you later. Bye bye.